happy Worship Wednesday to all you tuning in right now. We're tuning in later. We appreciate you guys joining us and connecting with us online like this. And the song we're about to sing together, I'm reminded of, of some scripture where Jesus and Peter have one of their many big conversations. And they're talking about identity. And Jesus is asking Peter, who am I? And he says, you're the Christ. And he tells Peter, and you're the rock. Now on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. Reminds me about another story about a rock. This house that was built on a rock, it was built on this firm foundation. And a house that was built on some sand. You see the waves that came up, you know, the winds they blew. That house that was built on sand was destroyed. We're going to sing a song called Build My Life Together, and we've been singing this for a while, but it's one of my favorites, because while there's a lot of scripture to it, I feel like this song is as much worship as it is a, a response to following Jesus and building our life, not on that foundation of sin, but on a foundation of love and truth, a foundation of Christ. So invite you wherever you're at, tuning in today. Sing this song with me. Let's sing worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever see. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Yeah. 
this call. Let's sing this. Pastor Mike here and wanted to share with you a little thought from the Gospel of Mark. Uh, if you've been following along with us, whether it be uh, Wednesday worship or morning devos, you know that we're going through the Gospel of Mark. And it's giving us a, a good idea of who this Jesus is that we claim to follow, or perhaps maybe you're not quite there yet and you just want to know more about this Jesus. Well, let me start today by telling you a bit of a story. Uh, it's been a number of years ago, but when I was in junior high, today you would know that as middle school, right? So seventh and eighth grade, we lived on a farm. We were about 15 miles from town where my mom worked at and a lot of times my stepdad would give her a ride into town now we had a long gravel road and if you've ever been by a gravel road you know they spit up a lot of dust when you're driving and so uh, we also lived on top of the hill the combination of the two we could see from quite a ways off when somebody was coming down the road towards our house especially from the direction in which my mom worked and so being the oldest of three boys whenever uh, my stepdad and mom would would leave the house we knew that we had roughly a half an hour uh, to be able to do whatever we wanted and so we would clear out all of the furniture from the living room and have our own little royal rumble and that's a, a, a term that's used Used in wrestling right so we would have our own wrestling match right there but we would always have somebody on guard right especially as the time approached that they might be coming down the road and so this spotter would be able to alert us and we would know that whenever the car was getting near that we needed to have everything cleaned up put back in its place we needed to bandage our wounds and move on as if nothing had ever happened because the parents 
were near, right? So if we were not diligent in that, we would get caught in our wrestling. We would get caught in our horsing around and we probably we probably would have been punished in that situation. Well, I want to tell you about uh, somebody else coming near. It's found in our passage today in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, Jesus has arrived on the scene, and it says in verse 14, Now after John was arrested, this is John the Baptist, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Well, up to this point, uh, last week we talked about the gospel, the good news. And in a world in which we're surrounded by so much bad news, it's so amazing to hear the good news of God. That, that when Jesus arrived on the scene, he brought with him peace, he brought with him joy, he brought with him him love, uh, so many good and great things that come along with the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel, right? And then Sunday's message, if you're following with our Sunday services, we're going through uh, this approach to Jesus uh, dying and being resurrected again. And so we're kind of getting a, a, a number of angles and we talked about the kingdom of God. And so Jesus ushers in the kingdom of God. Uh, long story short, uh, back in the Old Testament, uh, whenever the Israelites were making their way across the wilderness into the promised land, uh, they would set up their tents around the, the center tent, which was the tabernacle. That was the dwelling place of God. That was kind of their church. And so it, it symbolized something pretty profound, pretty important, that God himself was the king. Uh, all the other nations, though, as they're entering in, they realize that they're defeating this king and that king and that king. And they kind of get to the point where it's like, hey, God, where's our king? And this is a slap in the face, a total rejection of God, because they want now for some man to be their king, somebody who just couldn't live up to what he was trying to offer. And he even warned them, like, this is going to cause some trouble. But he, he relented. He allowed them to have what they wanted, which was a king. And so now we're seeing in Jesus the kingdom of God is at hand. It's, it's not that God ever left his throne. He allowed other people to step on the scene for a while. And, and sometimes it was in Israel. Sometimes it was in some other nation that was ruling over Israel such as the Babylonians or the Persians. And now we see that, that Jerusalem and the surrounding area, Israel, is ruled by the Romans. And so when Jesus proclaims the kingdom of God is at hand, what they're really thinking is, okay, great, like we've got somebody to fight our fight, somebody who's going to drive out the Romans, somebody who's going to set up authority, and we're going to be our own nation again. And they kind of miss the mark a little bit. But when Jesus says... Hey guys, the kingdom of God is at hand. And what it's really saying is it's near. And it would almost be as if Jesus were, were to send us a, a, a text message and says, Hey guys, I'm coming over in just a little bit. What kind of thoughts go through your mind? What kind of things would you be doing to prepare for Jesus to step into your living room, into your house? Are there certain things that you would try to clean up and, and to get ready? Or, you know, are you going to go dust the blinds? Are you going to go throw some of your extra stuff into a closet in the back corner someplace? You know, are you going to start deep cleaning and, and, and pulling stuff out? Are you going to throw away stacks of papers that have been sitting there for months uh, just so that you can be prepared for when Jesus arrives on the scene? Well, it's not just the physical things, right? Because sometimes it's, it's the things in our life. You know, there may be something that's in our hand that we no longer want in our hand when Jesus arrives on the scene. Uh, there may be somebody that we've been treating poorly that we want to make amends with before Jesus arrives on the scene. And, and when he steps in and he says, hey guys, I've got some good news, right? The kingdom of God is near. That was a, that was a call to action. And, and so it says here in Mark chapter 1, repent and believe. In, in the Gospel of Matthew, it says, repent and be baptized. But I want to focus specifically on this word, repent. Repent means that we stop doing what we're doing and we start doing what we know is right. <clears throat> so in my story, in my situation, that meant, hey guys, stop wrestling. We need to get all this furniture right back in its place. 
And maybe you can understand from a different perspective. Maybe your perspective is, you know, you've got a, a different supervisor that night, or maybe your supervisor just isn't there. And so uh, guys are a little bit more loose with what they're doing. Maybe uh, you had a class and, and a substitute teacher was there for that day. And so you took full advantage of what was going on. But now you realize the supervisor is coming back. Now you realize the teacher is coming back into the room. What is it that you need to straighten up? What is it that you need to get together? And my guess is that there are some things in our lives that if Jesus were to step on the scene today, we would be pretty embarrassed by. We'd be pretty ashamed of it. And, and we would wish that we would have a little bit of warning. And so he's given them a bit of a warning. Hey guys, the kingdom of God is at hand. And if you've studied scripture, you know that this has uh, oftentimes got multiple meanings. Number one is, I've arrived on the scene, so it's here right now. It's here. The kingdom of God has arrived. But it also has a meaning in it's coming again. It's, it's on its way in. I've, I've arrived, so it's, it's kind of here. But the reward is coming again when Jesus returns. Well, we read on in this passage, not only is the kingdom of God at hand and he brings with him good news and you and I, we need to repent, but Jesus begins to call his first disciples. So he's got this great news. He doesn't put out some sort of major news bulletin. He doesn't uh, put an ad in the paper. He doesn't run a, a social media blitz. He, he doesn't do any of that. What he does is he, he goes out and finds a few guys to join his cause. It says, passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Well, it makes sense, right? Galilee has this large sea. It's known as the Sea of Galilee. And there are guys there trying to earn their living. And so they're casting a net, a little bit different than just throwing out the fishing pole, but casting a net. It's got weights at the bottom of it. And they would try to reel in fish. And so he saw them tossing out their nets. And he said, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now, I'm sure that the story was much more robust than just those couple of lines that we see here in Mark chapter 1. Jesus is probably strolling along. We get the idea that they aren't really catching much of anything, right? But as he's seeing them, he's calling them to something greater. And I want you to think for a moment what it is in your life. What are you doing? Where are you finding your value? Where are you finding your income? And if Jesus were to step on the scene today and he were to, to, to give you this same command, come follow me, right? You're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to change some things. What would, what would he do differently in your life? What would you do differently in your life as a result of that? Is there a chance that maybe there would be a higher calling upon your life? Uh, let's look at these three things. Come. Right? You can't just stay. You can't sit. You can't do what you've always been doing when Jesus arrives on the scene. And I think that too many times that's the case, right? We just want to you know, make a confession of faith. We just want to uh, get dunked into a tank, immersed through baptism, and, and continue to do the same things that we've always been doing. And, and Jesus doesn't want that for us. He says, come, follow me. He's calling you to action. He's calling you away from your sin. He's calling you away from your past. He's calling you away from the things that you find of value right now into something that's greater for you. Come, follow me, right? Follow me is this, this idea that, that you walk in the dust of the rabbi. You see what he sees. You hear what he says. You, you eat what he eats. You sleep where he sleeps. You get an intimate look at the life of Jesus. And how awesome would that have been? And how horribly scary that might have been to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, to see the things that he was doing, to see the amount of persecution that he was facing, uh, to see him rile up the, the religious leaders at the time. But all the way along, they are learning in the process and I want to challenge you to come follow Jesus like get into the book of Mark with us start doing these daily devotions do some reading on your own maybe go into you version and find a reading plan and go along with that uh, as we're going through this book of Mark and understand more fully who Jesus is and more fully who he wants you to be come follow me and I will make you
Uh, too many times we bring this excuse that I'm, I'm just not ready, I don't know enough, I'm not smart enough, I don't have enough experience, like I don't really know this whole church thing. Uh, what do you mean the book of Mark? Is that in the Bible? What does that mean even? If, if you say Mark chapter 1, which chapter 1 or, or verse 14, or, like all of this is kind of foreign to you. I want to share with you that it's not about what you know right now. It's not even about what you're doing right now. It's all about what Jesus wants to do inside of you. And so he's calling you to come, step away from your norm, and follow him. And as you follow, as you're watching him, as you're learning from him, he will make you right? Not you make you, but the Spirit of God living inside of you through the power of Jesus. He will make you into who He wants you to be. And what He wants you to be follows this. And He says, I will make you a fisher of men. Now, for them, it had a different context, right? We're talking about fishermen becoming fishers of men. They're, they're no longer men out catching fish, but they're men out catching men, not for themselves, not for food, not for uh, marketable value, but so that the kingdom of God could be more full. They were allowing other people to know this same message. Hey guys, repent for the kingdom of God is near. The time is now. We need to start following Jesus and we need to allow him to make us into something greater than what we are, and that is fish of men. Uh, he doesn't say, hey, guys, come follow me. Let's make a church. He doesn't say, come follow me and let's make a Bible study. It, it's all about mission with Jesus. Come follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. I want other people to know about this good news. I want other people to know about the joy and the hope and the peace that they can have with this good news. That they're not going to be held captive by their sin. They're not going to be held captive by some of the, the struggles in their life. But they're going to have a new hope and new opportunities. Guys, we have an opportunity. Number one, to step into the life of Christ and experience His good news. To receive His kingdom, which is is at hand and we have a second thing to go and to share this good news with other people but it's only going to happen part one we receive the good news for ourselves, but we allow God through Christ through his word to make us new to make us more than what we currently are that we can start sharing the good news receive it share it get in it would you join me in a word of prayer? Oh, Father, we are so blessed to know that no matter what struggles we face, no matter the shame of isolation, and some of us right now, like through this whole quarantine and uh, the struggles that are going on with COVID-19, we've run away and we've gotten caught up in our old sinful life. We've allowed things to come into our homes that we would have not allowed before. But it seems as though when pressure's on, when the stress gets high, we start to cave. And so, Father, I pray for those individuals. Now, whether it be alcohol or pornography or food or shopping, whatever the case might be, that they are leaning too heavily on that, that you would, you would step into their life and you would give them freedom from that, and that you would give them the strength to stand up against it. Uh, Father, help us to be prepared for your good news, meaning that we've, we've done what we can to kind of tidy things up. We've done what we can to get into your word, to get with your people, to understand more fully. But we also understand that there's nothing that we can do on our own efforts that's going to allow us to be made into the image of God. There's nothing that we can do to inherit your kingdom. And that's why you send Jesus. And so, Father, help us to receive this call of Jesus to repent, to stop doing the wrong things and to begin doing what we know is right, and that, that we would follow after Jesus whether it be in person, uh, in His Word. But we know that following Jesus isn't just about reading about Jesus, but doing the things that Jesus did. And as we do the things that Jesus did, it will make us into a better person. So Father, would you come in and make us better? 
Would you make us more like Jesus, uh, more selfless, more sacrificial? Would you help us to love our enemies? And Father, would you, would you guide us into your mission, a mission to reach other people with this good news? So right now, we have so much bad around us. The first case of COVID-19 in Platte County. Not knowing the, the certainty of whether school is going to meet again this year. Jobs, unemployment, finances, depression, anxiety. All of those things can consume us. But Father, help us to be consumed by your good news. And help us to, to run into the trouble, into the stress, into uh, all of this mess, just like Jesus did. And when we step into the chaos, allow your good news to, to permeate, to spread, so that other people may know about your hope and your peace. Uh, Father, we ask that you would provide for those families who are burdened by finances. Help us to remember your word that says, Do not worry about today, for today has enough worries of itself. But you've taken care of the flowers and the fields and the birds of the air, and you're not going to let us go uh, into trouble. But you're going to provide for our needs. Father, help us to be content with where we are and to be able to experience that kind of peace that comes in a contentment based solely on this good news. Uh, Father, help us to uh, be able to uh, stand up and to stand firm for what we believe in. When the world is cowering in fear, when they're running away, may they see a light that shines brightly inside of us. And Father, help us to see the needs around us, to see people who need to be loved on, prayed for, encouraged, and served. And Father, help us to see when there's somebody who needs their groceries picked up or they need some uh, chores done uh, around their house and the opportunities we have to step in on the scene. Help us to see uh, young parents whose kids are home full time now and, and the opportunities we have to uh, bring them a little bit of relief. Now help us to, to know with wisdom where we should take the risks and where we should be a little bit more conservative. Not just with our faith, but just in being with other people. And Father, I pray for all of those who are watching at home, online, around the world. Father, you know their deepest needs right now. You know their insecurities, their fears and failures. You know their stresses and their struggles. And so, Father, would you speak specifically to them right now? And would they receive your good news into their life? And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us, guys, for Wednesday worship. We hope God is blessing you throughout this week as you faithfully follow Him.